Hey everybody, this is GliderCat and it's time to play. Today I have an early preview for you of an upcoming factory automation game. We've got lots of those on the channel <laughs> called, uh, this one's called Factropy, kind of like factory and entropy. Uh, this game is being developed by a single developer and he describes Factropy as follows. Two parts Factorio, one part Satisfactory, a dash of Supreme Commander, and a bunch of loose ideas that he had for mods of those games mentioned. Now, Factropy is slated to release into early access sometime in 2022. There is a Steam store page for it. I'll put a link to that in the description uh, so you can wishlist it and follow it. Uh, I also put links to the itch.io page. Now, that's where you can pick up the game now if you'd like to check it out yourself. There's a demo available there that you can play. Uh, in this video, I'm showing footage from that demo version and some of the footage from the developer uh, himself. But again, that's available on HIO. There's a link to that in the description. I need to mention that as with just about all of my early preview videos, please keep in mind that I'm showing very early pre-alpha gameplay. So expect there to be some changes as the game continues to be developed, especially if you're watching this months after it posts. Now, before we get too far into this early preview, I want to pause here to thank GliderCat patrons and channel members. The contributions from that small group of viewers are what makes these early preview videos possible and keep the channel afloat. It does take a good deal of time to find, research, and then present these early games for you, so I really appreciate the support of that group of folks. Uh, if you'd like to join that group in supporting the GliderCat channel, you can find links to do so in the description. Okay, now back to Factropy. Now I'm planning to create a preview Let's Play series on the game, so watch for that if you'd like to see more. Uh, however, I'm not exactly sure when that will post. I've been a little pinched for time lately as I record this, but I definitely want to get this early preview video out to you and get the game on your radar and, uh, and get you those links where you can try it out yourself. All right, so let's take a look at the game Kind of walk you through what it's all about this is just a game world from my first playthrough it's not done it's a mess <laughs> and the layout is is a bit squirrely as i work to learn the game but it'll, it'll be a good example just to show you what the game's about this is my factory or my initial factory the map oh we got an attack coming in it's worth showing you that right now so periodically you'll get uh incoming Ballistic missiles and things that come in to attack your base. You just need to set up some defensive turrets and things. And there's obviously a way to do that in the game. I'm only aware of a single turret. There may be more. The map in the game is limited. I believe it's randomly generated, but it does have an edge to it. So it's only so big. But in my first little playthrough here, it's it's plenty. It's plenty big. Um, you can see my factory, I got a bunch of stuff going on and I'm just in this tiny little spot. Now over here, this is the first, as I was learning the game, this is kind of what I set up initially. We can look at some of that in a minute. And then uh, over this way, if I can find it, over here, I started setting up another factory and trying to be a little more organized. But why I came over here, this Zeppelin, you start out with this Zeppelin, big old blimp thing here, and this has a bunch of construction drones in it that are going to allow you to do your uh, build out your factory. So, for example, I've got some belts down here. If I want to extend a belt, grab that off the hotbar, zoom in so I can see the direction that it's going to go. Just drop a few of these back out and you can see these little construction drones come down from your blimp and do the building for you. So that's how that's done. And they are using resources that are on the blimp. So are their Zeppelin. So if I go and click on this, this is the inventory that's in my Zeppelin right now. And we're able to set upper and lower limits for all of these items. And the Zeppelin will automatically pick it up from your storages, all of these different, different products. So I've got ammunition in here. I've got circuit boards, copper sheets, all kinds of building materials, basically. I've got stored in my Zeppelin. And to move this guy around, he has to be in range of your where you're doing your building. You just click on it, whoops. And as a matter of fact, I don't even think you need to click on it. If you just control click, see here, control right click. 
he'll go off where you sent him. He does not attack. Um, I've got ammunition on it just. I was transporting ammunition over to this new base as I was getting it started. So what else can we see here? That's basically what you're going to start out with. It's kind of a big floating warehouse with construction drones attached. I believe later on in the game, you can set up construction drones and drone ports down on the surface of the planet. I haven't been gotten to that far yet, um, but let's just take a look at this little factory and see what we've got going on. In the mountain here, if I just hover over the mountain and hit the space bar, boom, I can see all the resources that are in that mountain. It looks like 1.8 million iron, a bunch of copper, coal, stone, a little tiny bit of tin, lead and aluminum. And then kind of coming out of the mountain here, I've got some mining drills, uh, miners. These guys will mine whatever resource is in the mountain that they're attached to. And they need to kind of be embedded in the mountain. And you just pick whatever you want to mine out. Uh, you can just pick from a list here. So you don't have to be on a particular coal deposit to get coal or an iron deposit to get coal. If that mountain's got it in there, you can just pick and say, hey, get that stuff out of there for me. So let's see what we've got going on. Basically, I'm mining some iron out of this guy. Then I've got some conveyors coming out. There's a robotic arm feeding a crusher. And here, same kind of thing. You do have to pick what uh, material you want to crush. It doesn't just, seems like this could almost be made to just crush whatever it gets. But I've got that set up for iron crushing. That'll make sense. Then I've got robotic arm putting that crushed iron into storage. Big storage container here. This thing holds a ton. I think 5,000 units of material and then from that uh from that storage a couple more robotic arms feeding into furnaces this is all stuff we are familiar with if you've played factory games before so we're doing steel smelting here these guys are loading in the crushed iron steel gets put into another containers as steel ingots then those steel ingots get combined with this production line over here which is basically doing the exact same thing except for copper ore right it's got a copper miner there all the same kind of stuff crush it smelt it turn it into bars there's one extra step here on the copper side for this particular factory and we i've got an assembler here and it's turning those copper ingots into copper sheets and again we can pick all the different things that an assembler can craft here. There's a bunch of items and I imagine there's more, maybe more that I'm gonna unlock and maybe more that will um, be available as the game is developed. If you look at the settings, there's not too much here. I can turn it on off the assembler or any of these buildings. I think I can go to settings and just turn them off. Uh, looks like the furnace I cannot turn off. That's kind of odd. Furnace takes coal as well. So you can see the fuel level there. And we're feeding coal in via the storage containers. So I've got coal here. And again, just giving you an overview. This is all very similar to other factory games we've played. One thing that is a little unique is we've got pneumatic tubes here. Unlike in Bapio, if you're familiar with that game, I've got some videos of that on the channel. From a long time ago, I need to do some updated videos of Bapio. But these pneumatic tubes only go in one direction and they allow us to go vertical. So here I'm taking some coal out of a coal mine here and sending it via pneumatic tube kind of to the middle of where all these smelters are. And then routing it into storage here. So these two smelters can access coal, sending it directly into that one. And same thing over here into storage and then robotic arms feeding coal. So one way for pneumatic tubes those pneumatic tubes can also climb up this mountain if you want to place them up here. Conveyors, you cannot. They're a bit more limited so far from what I've seen. I don't know if the game, how the game will develop as it goes on. I didn't find a splitter control for the, um, for the conveyors either. So you're stuck using robotic arms unless I'm missing something or maybe a splitter will come. So let's see. This whole factory right now is basically making ammunition. That's what these assemb this assembler is doing, the copper plates. 
Then these guys are set up to do animation, uh, ammunition. They take steel ingots and copper sheets and spit out ammunition. And so it looks like I've got uh, a bunch of copper sheets and steel ingots available. So let's uh, just do a little building and we can see what this looks like. I'm going to throw down two more assemblers. Hopefully I have enough construction materials to do this. I'll put that one right next to it and then maybe leave three spaces for here. Boom for that one. You can see our construction drones are coming out from the blimp, taking the building materials and assembling our assembly buildings. Let's go ahead and extend our conveyor. Boom, this guy can come down. There's multiple types of conveyors, so if I hit the C key, boom, there's some different types. We can get the curved ones. But I just need to come straight down, so we'll do that. Hit escape to get out of the build menu. And I'm going to set up robotic arms to feed, in this case, copper plates or copper sheets, I guess, into our assemblers. Now these robotic arms, let's grab one that's already built. We have filters. So we can say, hey, only move, uh, let's see, where are the copper sheets? Copper sheets. And what's really cool about these, you can select multiple things. You can say, hey, move copper sheets and move bricks. Or, you know, and it'll just stack up here. And then if you want to unselect something, you just click on it. Very cool. Uh, input near, input far. I'm guessing that's if you want to leverage both sides of the belt and have some materials on either side of the belt, different materials maybe on either side of the belt. And then uh, same thing, output near and far. I haven't played with that. I'm just guessing what that is. Uh, enable if source store. I'm not sure what this is all about. We won't get into too many of those details. Well, let's see what the other tabs are real quick. Network, not sure. And settings, turn it on and off. Okay, so we've got our copper plates coming in. If you don't set a filter, by the way, it'll just feed everything in. Uh, in our assemblers, let's pick a recipe for ammunition. Do that for both of these, boom. So now these guys are sending their copper plates. They're slow because I think I'm running low on electricity. I believe that's what's happening there. I don't think it's the game. On this side, I need to hop the belt. So I'm gonna put a tube here. Here, and let's see if we can make it somewhat symmetrical. I'm going to start uh, a new game and hopefully record a kind of a an early preview Let's Play season for the game. I'm hoping to get that out, so watch for that on the channel. Let's finish hooking up these conveyors. Boom. I think that's as far as that one needs to go for now. I guess I can extend it a little bit. And then over here... Once those get built, this pneumatic tube should send some of those steel ingots over. And we just need robotic arms to take them in. I don't necessarily need filters here, I don't think. Boom for you and boom for you. And then let's get those routed into the storage container. I've got almost 2,000 already. With the storage containers, you can also set limits on what items can be stored. So you have to specify what items to store and you have to specify what quantity. I can up that to 3,000 or 3050. And then last, let's uh, let's do the belts here. In fact, I think I can just do one long run from right here, maybe. And I noticed earlier that the um, that I can't feed into a curved belt like that, so I'm gonna. Just remove this guy, do a delete, and pop a regular straight section on there once that gets taken away. I think it's still there. I think I'm waiting on a drone. There we go. Boom. And then let's just finish this little task here. I think I'm pulling from this side, so I need a belt. Belt. and one of these guys, one of these guys. And again, if I don't set a filter on the robotic arms, they will just take everything. 
from the construction drones, building my robotic arms. There we go, a bunch more ammunition. Wind turbines, pretty straightforward. And then here's our turrets. I'm just feeding these guys from a belt. Probably multiple ways to do it. But we will periodically get a bunch of incoming, what looks like ballistic missiles. And they will destroy your factory pretty fast. So defenses are a thing. I don't know if you'll be able to turn enemies off. I did suggest that to the developer. There's also no ability right now to pause the game. So that was another suggestion I made. And then uh, right now there is no music. So if you're hearing any music, if I add music to this video, that is not part of the game. There's no sound in the game just yet, from what I can tell. So that's basically that. Let's see, you can pick up trees and stone. That has a purpose. Just click and hit delete. And then your Zeppelin here will send out a bunch of drones to collect all those materials. All very cool. And we can see those in the inventory here stacking up. There's the stones. And did I get logs? Oh, I think the logs. Okay, yeah, there should be some logs coming on. There they are. They're coming, but they're being sent. Because I'm in range of a storage that accepts logs, the drones are automatically taking those logs and popping them in this storage so we can watch those logs climb up. All pretty cool. And again, you have to have your Zeppelin, at least initially, until you can set up logistical robot uh, drones and things. But you do need to have your Zeppelin in range of where you're doing your building. And you can see as I hover over what that range is, it's pretty big. Other things to show you, electricity in the game. So we see all these wind turbines. There is another way to get electricity, at least one other way, probably more. Over here, we've got a water pump, a boiler, and a couple turbines generating electricity over here as well. There's, there goes the animation on those guys. And then uh, over here, we've got this rocket, kind of similar to Satisfactory, where you're sending resources up the um, space elevator. That's kind of the notion in this game of what your goals are. You're going to fill your rocket up with a bunch of resources and then launch it. And that's kind of how you complete objectives in the game. This little setup down here is for rocket fuel, hydrazine. And it takes logs and water and now puts hydrazine. And then I've got that piped to my launch pad. Fuels the ship. I've got a belt in here ready to put materials into the spaceship. And then we can launch it. I might be able to launch it right now with just empty. Let's see what it looks like. Launch. Is it going to go? There it goes. It's got fuel. Serves no purpose right now <laughs> because I'm supposed to be sending it something else, sending something else up. But you can see the kind of the rocket launch, the early animation for that. That's it. We can kind of see the shadow in the distance going up. That's kind of how you complete your objectives. Uh, electricity, I wanted to show you up here at the top of the screen. You can see a breakdown of all the electricity. So we've got two steam engines. I guess those are each putting out a megawatt. Got a bunch of wind turbines scattered around. Our Zeppelin, if we provide it fuel, can generate power for us. And in the early game, uh, that is your main power source. There's no power poles, unfortunately. If you guys have seen my satisfactory, uh, my satisfactory Let's Play, you know I like power poles. There's no power poles. Don't need to worry about that. The electricity just kind of transfers transports itself across the island, kind of like Captain of Industry. Let's see. So you can get a breakdown of that. And then in here, this build screen, up at the top of the screen, I hit the E key. Boom. This is like a giant codex of everything involved, uh, everything in the game, really. So you have a toggle here in the top left where you can show the things that you currently have unlocked and you're able to build only if you want to filter out the stuff you can't build yet or you can click the show unavailable stuff and you'll see everything and you can see there are a ton of materials in the game so here's kind of raw i guess raw items and then here we've got recipes for how to make things so for batteries you need lead ingots copper sheets steel sheet and 20 sulfuric acid out comes a battery and you put those inputs into the chemical plant in order to get that battery. 
bunch of recipes here. These are context sensitive. So if I want to learn about circuit boards, I come up here, say circuit board. It's produced by the circuit board printing recipe. I can click on that. It takes me to circuit board printing. I can see what I need. And then what is it? If I see I need an assembler, I can click on the assembler and that'll take me over to here. It'll show me what it takes for me to build an assembler. All oh, very cool. You can see just from looking at this, there's a lot in this game. Look at all these materials, all these recipes and all these different buildings and things that you can build. Very cool. The drones, there's the drone port right there. I was talking about, you can have, uh, drones. I read in the description, I believe it was on itch.io that, um, there's only one type of drone, construction drones and logistics drones are the same thing in this game and construction is just prioritized. So it's a little bit simplified over like Factorio. Tons of stuff in here. There's also trucks, which I have not gotten to or seen how they work, but that looks really cool. And there are blimps that I noticed. Mark one through Mark three blimps. So you can have uh, in addition to your conveyor belts and your pneumatic tubes, you can have a bunch of logistics going through the sky as well with those blimps. And then I imagine trucks as well. Like I said, I haven't gotten a chance to try those out, but it sounds pretty cool. Go back to that build screen over here on the, I guess, right side under goals, at least in the demo. And I imagine this is going to be part of the full game as well. I'm currently playing the demo here. You'll get a series of objectives that kind of walk you through what you need to do. In the very beginning, it's like all you need to do is place a miner down and mine some iron ore. Once you do that, you'll unlock all of these different um, materials that you can now build or technologies you can use. So this is kind of like a tech tree and it's all serial. You go one by one by one by one and it kind of tells you what you need to do. Pretty straightforward. Right now I'm down here on the sustainment level. You can see all these ones have already been met and I'm at this uh, sustainment goal and it shows it up here at the very top of the screen too, towards the right, what my current goal is. And maybe this is showing progress, I guess, towards that goal. So for this one, in order to meet this goal, I need to produce 5,000 ammunition an hour for a duration of three hours <laughs> and, and and I need to supply or I need to provide produce, I'm guessing, 5,000 repair kit Mark 1s for an hour for three hours. And I don't know if I need to. Oh, it says supply. I need to actually send these up in the rocket, I believe, in order to meet this goal. So I need to ship. I need to launch the rocket with a, I think it takes a thousand at a time is the most this thing can take. Um, but wow, I need to get a lot up there in order to meet that goal. Wow. Back to that here. So you can see why I was setting up that set that other factory over there to do ammunition over here. I've actually got repair kits being made or did have repair kits being made. Where are they up here? Maybe. Yeah. A few have only got 65 left. I just sent a thousand up. That is kind of the tech tree. What else can I show you? There is oil in the game. There's offshore oil rigs. You can kind of see if you look close that this water underneath has a topology to it. And so there are oil rigs that you can place, but they need to be out from the coast a bit in a certain depth of water. I'm not sure what else you can do in the water, but uh, I haven't set that up yet. This, uh, this guy here, this, what is this? Does it show? It's not showing me. Chemical plant. Okay. Well, looks like that's not showing the water pump. Not kind of showing up right now, but that needs to be kind of off into the water a little bit or on the, at least on the beach. If you look really close, you can see the grid system here. Everything is built on the grid and the grid kind of ends right here. That kind of marks the transition into the ocean, which is why I was able to put this little water pump here, kind of half on the beach. 
what else can I show you? Pretty cool game. I've had a ton of fun playing this. I played it for several hours, <laughs> several hours already, and I have not encountered a single bug. Now, some of the art here, I imagine, or the visuals here, I'm guessing some of these are going to be placeholders and will be be replaced with a, a little more refined graphics, but it looks fine to me actually as is. Very playable, very intuitive, had no issues playing it. Again, I'm going to plan on doing a short, probably a short Let's Play series on this. I'll start a new game and walk through some of those goals that I've already done here. Um, incidentally, I learned that these wind turbines do better if they're placed up top. I should also mention the hotbar is configurable, but you can also come into the build menu. And if I do wind turbine, I can see it takes five steel sheets, five bricks, and I just click this build button, boom. Now I can place wind turbines wherever I want kind of thing. Pretty cool. Now my blimp, my uh, blimp, I keep calling it a blimp. This uh, Zeppelin is not in range. Let's just move him over there and see if he'll get in range. He might move pretty slow because he doesn't have... Yeah, he's moving super slow. Let's do this. Right now he doesn't have fuel. <laughs> so he's just kind of... Uh, I guess they're pedaling up there. I'm going to turn off storage for logs so that the Zeppelin will not try and store them here. And then I'm going to fetch some more logs. Just by hitting the delete key, the drone should come out. Maybe this is going to be still. Let's see if we can get this guy some logs. Come on, buddy. These look like they're marked. Not sure if he's got to stop moving before he uh, sends out the drones. The other thing I can show you while we're waiting on that, there is a cut and paste mode to this, I believe. If I wanted to extend this belt down, or actually this whole factory setup, here, I think I can select like this, do a control C, and boom, there I go. So there's been some quality of life stuff put into the game already. There goes our drones collecting the wood. Are they sending it back down? No, they're doing building. All right, I've got some logs. I'm going to send this guy over just so we can get those turbines built. Looks like he won't move while he's building. There goes our construction drones expanding the factory here. Pretty cool. I think, do these guys keep their recipes? Yeah. I pasted that in and it just copied the recipe that I used on the other one. That's good. There we go. Let's see if this guy stops and starts building these. There he is. Yep. There go our turbines, and these ones should be more efficient than the ones down low. Yeah, you can tell already, right? Look how fast these guys are spinning compared to the ones down on the ground. Anyway, very, <laughs> very cool game. Again, you get hooked into it. When I first saw it, I was like, okay, it looks kind of, you know, it looks kind of rudimentary, looks kind of basic, but it will suck you in, and the goals are kind of engaging and the scale we'll see if this thing scales up but there is room to exploit a bunch of resources here and build a pretty sizable factory like i said there's blimps and trucks and things kind of anxious to get into that and just hit the space bar if you want to see what resources a mountain has available i don't think that's just oh oil in the water check it out so if i hover over the water it shows me how much oil is available 130,000 units there, 2.3 million there. So again, offshore oil rigs can be placed. You can generate fuel. Here comes another incoming attack, these ballistic missiles. I've got plenty of defenses now, so we're good. Yeah, so that's it. Early preview 
of Factropy. <laughs> it's a pretty cool game. Again, it's available right now on itch.io as I'm uh, recording this. But yeah, highly recommend checking it out and then stay tuned to the GliderCat channel. Again, I'm trying, I'm going to hopefully get a Let's Play series going on this one. I'm not exactly sure when that'll post, but uh, in this early preview, I want to get the game on your radar. Special thanks to GliderCat patrons and channel members. Your contributions help make this content possible. I really, really appreciate it. If anybody else wants to join that small but very much appreciated group of patrons, there'll be a link to do so in the description. And that's really what allows me to uh, spend time on putting this content together for you. I truly appreciate it. For now, this is GliderCat saying thanks so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one.